Well, hey all, and welcome back. Today we're going to check out two Hatsune Miku statues that are in two very different styles. On the left, we have a sleepwear costumes version from Taito, and on the right, we have the live stage version from Sega. It's kind of fun that we have two video game companies now making statues of these characters. Let's go ahead and start with the costumes version and see if it's worthy of our collection. Checking out the packaging is a variety of photographs of the figure in a few different compositions. We have a nice wholesome logo here, and we have some nice decorations in the background of the photographs. The box itself is fairly standard, and it looks good. I do think it's well designed, and it does fit the aesthetic to go along with the figure, all while exhibiting its visual characteristics. Let's go ahead and get her out of the packaging. The figure is well protected and it comes in a few pieces. We have the primary figure, and we have two pieces of hair. Finally, we have a base. Assembly is pretty straightforward. We just place the translucent extensions on the feet into the base. And then we insert the hair. One goes in fairly easily, but the other one needs a decent bit of force to fit in. Sometimes heating things up like this with a hair dryer helps, but I was still able to get it to go in. The aesthetic of this figure is quite nice. I think my favorite aspect of it is the matte tones of this. The application of color really gives it a sense of coming off the page versus being a plastic sculpture. The skin tone is rather nice. There are some details of the eyes, and the eyes definitely have the hand-drawn aesthetic. We have a hair that leans more towards green, and it's actually made of a translucent plastic with a gradient that goes into the tips of the hair. The only thing that might stand out visually is that it almost looks like she's standing on some sort of jelly or goop, but that was just a translucent means of having her elevated off the stand and not drawing too much away from her actual design without putting her on something. I think it is a fair design decision. However, some may not find it as appealing. I think the socks complete the look. I think that really gives it the vibe of being sleepwear. All the material seems pretty similar, even though we have a different color palette on the pants, the shirt, and the socks, but they do seem to be made of the same sort of material. The one material that does contrast with this is the top itself. But overall, I think the aesthetic works very well. I think the quality materials holds up. The figure doesn't have any lean to it. No issues stand out. And I think if this is your style, this is definitely something you want to check out. Now let's go ahead and jump to our next figure. The live stage version of this figure from Sega has a very different aesthetic. The iconography, the colors, the hues, all reference from the electronic dance music scene. We have a high quality glossy box with a variety of photos of the figure all around it. On the back, we have simple instructions as well as typical text you see on the back of toy packaging. The top has this excellent illustration that I wish was implemented more on the rest of the packaging. Now let's go ahead and see what's inside. Open up the clamshell, we have a well-protected figure that is wrapped in plastic. Once we get the plastic off, we can see that we have two pieces of hair as well as a hand with a remote. Assembly is fairly straightforward. We just plug in this one foot into the base. Unlike the other figure, we have a simple geometric form attached to one foot that feels a little bit more believable for the sculpture. And as for the hand, it plugs in easily. The hair extensions are a little trickier, however, because the peg is quite small. I was able to get this one in on camera. However, the other one I had to do off camera. It took a little fiddling to get correct. Aesthetically, we have a large variety of colors and textures going on here. We have mattes, we have glosses, we have metallics, all working together to make a very interesting visual. The sculpture is upright and looks very good with no leaning. And overall, the paint quality and everything is, is excellent. There is one interesting aspect though. Looking at the face head on from above, you see this great smile. However, 
when you move below, she looks a little bit more worried. It's just an interesting effect that sometimes occurs with 3D sculpted objects. Overall, I think the quality is pretty good in this figure. It's pretty solid with minimal seam lines. If you like the more cartoony vibe, or even the reference to dance music culture, I think this one would be right up your alley. Looking at both these figures together, you can see they're very unique and different in their own aesthetics. It is also interesting to see these two classic video game companies to show their own approach on doing a 3D sculpted plastic statue. I think there's some interesting uses of the materials as well as the colors. I think it's really neat to see how varied Hasina Miku is often portrayed. But anyway, let us know which of these figures is worthy of your collection. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.